All right, so let's add the dark and light mode feature to our website. So first thing I want to do is to add an icon or a button in the navigation. Let's go to resources, then JS, then layouts, and then we have our main layout right here. I keep forgetting to do this. We want to copy these classes and add it to the main tag so that they are consistent. All right, so we have this home link and under that, I will create a new div and within that we will have a button. So for the content of this button, I want an icon from Font Awesome. Let's go to Font Awesome website and we want to search for an icon. So let's say dark, this will bring up all the icons. We want to choose free here. And then on the left side, I want to choose solid. So this is your preference if you want to choose any icon here. So I'm gonna select this one and then copy this i tag and paste it as the content of our button. Then I want to add some classes to the button itself. So we have some hover effects that will just be lighter color. We have a width and height that is set to six. We are setting display to grid and place item center. So this icon will be centered. We set the rounded to full, so it's circle and some outline when we hover over it. So let's go back to the website. So you can see it's under the home link. We should fix that. But when you hover over it, it works. So first, let's fix the nav problem. On the nav tag itself, let's say flex, items center, and justify between. So this will push these two elements apart from each other. Now we need two functions. One, to set the theme when the page loads, so on the initial load, and one, to change the theme when we click on this. And for that, I'm going to create a separate JS file just to keep things clean. Inside our JS folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it theme.js. So first, let's create a function and let's call it set theme on load. And then we want to add an if else statement and check for two things. I'm going to put this on a new line so it's easier to see. So first, we want to take a look at the local storage theme and see if there is a dark in the local storage. So that is the first condition. Then we want to say or, so I'm adding two pipes here, and then we want to check for two other conditions that is going to use the and operator. So I'm gonna add parentheses and then another set of parentheses and say if theme in local storage. We want to negate this and say if this key is not in the local storage and if our window match media has this key so it's called prefer color scheme and the value of that is dark so let me just write this and i will explain what's going on because it's quite difficult to type and talk all right so this is our condition and before i explain i want to show you where it is coming from if we go to telvin website and just search for dark mode and just scroll down a bit we have this spaghetti.js and our function is coming from here. In Tailwind website, they explain how we can implement this. But basically, we are just checking if there is a dark key in the local storage or there is no theme at all in the local storage and the window match media, basically the system preference of a user is dark, then we want to set the whole website to a dark mode. So we can say document, then grab the document element itself and the class list, and we want to add that dark key. So if this logic returns true, that means the user prefers the dark mode. And that's why we are adding the dark mode. But if that's not true, then we will remove the dark mode. So that is the first one. And then we want another function, which is going to be quite similar to this, and it's going to be attached to that button. So I'm gonna copy the whole thing, paste it down here. We just want to change the name to switch theme like this. And the logic is going to be the same, but the body of this if else statement is going to be different. Because remember, this is on a button click. So again, we want to check if the user's preference is dark and we want to click on the button, that means we want to remove that dark. And also in the local storage, we want to add the theme key and set the value of that to light. But if that is false, we want to add the dark theme. And also in the local storage, we want to do the same thing, just add dark. So now we have our functions and we need to export them so we can use them elsewhere. So I'm going to export them in an object, export the first one and the second one. So we want to call this one when the application loads, and that means in our app.js. So let's open app.js and at the very bottom, we can just call that function. So let's say set theme on load and this should be auto imported for us up here. 
and make sure you invoke it using the parentheses. Now, if I save this document and go back, we don't see any difference. And that's because we didn't apply any classes. But if we go to our app.blade.php, we can add some global classes. For example, I want to have sort of a light color when it is light theme for the background and a global text color. So we will say text slate 900, but when it's dark using the dark modifier like this, so we can say dark colon and we can set the background to maybe a slate 700. And again, we can say dark colon text white. So if the theme is dark, we set the text to white and the background to a bluish dark. But if it is light, then it's going to be white with black text. So back to our website, you notice it's already applied because my computer or my machine's preference is dark. So we can close this app.blade.php. We can also close our app.js. And then we want to use this switch theme function on this button in our navigation. Let's do this on the button. I'm just going to press enter and add a new line and use at click and use switch theme here. You notice it is auto imported for me and we expect to switch the theme when we click on this. Now let's see if this works. I'm going to open our local storage. So going to the application tab, we have local storage and then the URL. You notice I don't have any key value pairs here, but when I click on this, we get theme set to light. Again, it's dark light. So it is working, but there is no effect on the website. And that is because we didn't tell Tailwind that we want to do this manually. If we go back to Tailwind website once again, and on the right side, we have toggling dark mode manually. If you click on that, you can see right here, they state that if you want to do this manually, you need to set the dark mode to selector in your Tailwind config. So let's do this. Going back to the project, we can open Tailwind config.js and maybe at the very top, I want to say dark mode colon and in quotations, we want to say selector. So let's add the comma. And if we save this, going back to our website, you notice it, it's light now because we have it in the local storage. And if we click on this button, we are switching back and forth. Now let's set this to light and I'm going to delete this key value pair from the local storage. And if I reload the page, you notice it's back to dark again because that set theme on load is being called and that is setting the theme as the initial load. And because there is no key value pair, it goes back to the system preference, which is dark for me. If we set it to light again, so we have something in the local storage and we reload, we stay on the light theme because we have that key in the local storage. So that is basically how you can add dark mode using Tailwind CSS to any website. And from now on, when we create any component or any element, we will add dark mode to it. So we would be able to switch back and forth and see how it looks. So in the next video, we will start with the registration form and we will take it step by step.